Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I hope everybody is staying safe and your families are all healthy and all that good stuff with this coronavirus going around. It's kind of scary times we're living in, but we will get through them. In the meantime, I thought that I would put out a video on Fusion to sort of uh, help us maybe take our mind off of it and to learn something along the way. So the point of today's video is I want to talk about uh, controlling toolpaths and sort of uh, chaining through geometry without having to create sketch geometry. So we're gonna look at a part, I'm gonna show you kind of both ways to do that. I'm gonna show you how we can do it with the sketch geometry. And I'm also gonna show you how there's tools inside of Fusion that will oftentimes help us not have to create sketch geometry to do the same thing. If you guys want to, you can work on the same exact part that I'm gonna show you by going to your data panel. Uh, you're gonna click on the home button and come down to cam samples. So under the samples directory, there's a, there's a directory called cam samples. And inside of there, there's a Fusion Academy cam classes. Go ahead and double click on that. And then there is a folder called Beyond the Chips with my name on there. If you double click on that one, this is from a, a Fusion Academy class I did in Portland this last summer. And the file that I want to work with is this one called Direct Edit. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that Direct Edit file. And it's going to open it up in the design uh, workspace. So kind of a weird orientation. We'll look at how we can kind of fix that along the way. Um, if we switch over to manufacture, what we'll see is there's a couple setups on here. I want to be on setup one when we do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and activate that. And I'm not going to worry about roughing this part out or anything like that. And you'll also notice that when we get in here that uh, where my WCS is located, that the Z is up, X and Y are away from us. But when we look at the model, nothing, or the view cube, I should say, nothing really matches the, what we consider the different orientations. So this surface here, I would consider to be the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, orient to that. And now when I look at that, I got my Y and my Z and my X oriented the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on my view cube and say set current view as home. Um, I'm sorry, set current view as top is what I wanna do first. I'm gonna set that to be top and then I'm gonna kinda rotate this around and click on this corner. And now if we look at my setup, we're kind of looking at an isometric view. Now I'm going to do the right click, set current view as home, fit to view. And now I've just kind of reoriented uh, the lighting and the grid and all that kind of stuff to make it look a little bit more normal. But it didn't change some of the other orientation things, so that's good. Um, it just is helpful for us. Now anytime I rotate this around and click on the home button, it's going to go back to the right home orientation that I want to have. Okay, with that being said, let's go back over to design, and now we're in the design uh, workspace, and we're going to go ahead and see how we can make a sketch on this to kind of drive some of our tool paths. So the goal here is I want to do a 2D contour around this upper area of the finger um, to machine around the outside. And what we'll notice is we have a line here and we have a line here, but then the line stop. There's nothing to drive that geometry around the outside of the finger. So what I could do is I could create a sketch to do that. Now before I do that, I want you to notice at the bottom of the screen, there is no design history currently turned on. This file was imported from a different CAD package. And when you import it in, it doesn't have design history on by default. So if you want that, what you can do is right click on the file name here and choose capture design history. Now the timeline turns on and everything we do inside of Fusion will now be captured. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a sketch and I'm going to choose this plane as where I want that sketch to go. I've talked about this in previous videos before, uh, but if we go ahead and turn the body off, what you'll see is that outline of that face that I clicked on is already there. And what Fusion is doing is because I have a setting turned on that's on by default, it's projecting in all the edges of the plane that I clicked on. So whatever that plane was that represents the boundaries, it projects those edges in and then gives me a closed boundary for it. So what I want to do is I don't want those. I don't need those lines. I'm just going to drag a window around it and hit the delete key. And now when I turn the bodies off, you'll see that that projection is now gone. I want to make my own projection to do this. And a couple ways you can do this is you can click on the letter P on your keyboard or you can go to the create menu, project include and project. And now what we want to do is we just want to carefully click on the entities that we want to project in. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the lines that I want to project into my uh, sketch. And what Fusion is doing is anything that I click on, it's going to project it down to the active sketch plane that I created my sketch on. So we'll just keep going around this part and clicking on the edges that we want to be uh, part of our sketch. And just got a couple more here to go. You can see it's a little bit 
tedious to click on these different edges. So now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And if I zoom out a little bit so we can get this on the screen a little bit and I turn the bodies on and off, you can see I have an exact representation of that area that uh, I want to machine and all those edges are projected in. These projections are associative, so if the model would change, the projection should update as well. And now what I could do is I could go into Fusion Cam, select a 2D contour, and either turn off my body to select this chain really easily, or just uh, uh, Fusion should find that chain as well. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you a different way to do this in this video. And uh, what we always say in our classes is, if you are not going to use the sketch for actually machining purposes, so we want to have this on when we need it, but when we don't need it, we want to make sure we turn it off. So I'm not going to use it. I'm going to go turn the sketch off. Uh, here's another tip. A lot of people will go and they'll turn the sketch off at the root level, the very parent level. And now what happens is they finish their sketch and they go to make a new sketch and they click on it and they start drawing and they're like, wait a minute. Um, when they finish the sketch, they're like, where did my sketch go? It's not visible anymore. It's because you turned it off at the sketches level instead of the actual the sketch that we wanted to do. So I'm just going to delete this sketch off and I'm going to turn this one on and turn this one off. And now I won't run into that problem. So I'm in the design workspace. I'm going to switch over to the manufacturer workspace. And again, remember our goal, we'll pretend this is roughed out. Our goal is to do a finishing pass around this finger down to this particular height. Um, so we'll see that there's a pretty cool way we can do this inside of Fusion without creating any sketch geometry. From the 2D menu, I'm going to select 2D Contour, and I'm going to go grab a tool. In this document, there's a quarter inch flat that we can use. And now I'm going to go to the geometry. So what I'm going to do is sometimes it's best to use the Alt key to do this. In this case, I don't have to. But I'm going to hover over the piece of geometry that I want to keep. So I'm going to click on that once, and it turns blue. I'm going to move my mouse back over the top of it until it turns red, and I'm going to click it a second time. Now Fusion wants to know, do I want a closed contour or an open contour? In this case, I want an open contour. My next selection that I want to make is where do I want the contour to stop? So I want to go around the finger, but I want this to be my last piece of geometry. When I click on that, you can see that Fusion takes the shortest path. So I like to joke and say that Fusion is lazy like person, and it will try to get to the shortest path that it can doing the least amount of work. But that's not right. So what we can do is Fusion's kind of like a traffic cop. We can kind of move our mouse around and Fusion will pick different solutions based on where our mouse is at, at the different intersections. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that line right there. And then I'm going to come out to the very end of this finger and click on that. And now you can see the black highlights go around the total geometry that I want to machine. The final step here, and this is a key one, is to remember to click on the green plus. And when I do, Fusion now gives me that chain of geometry without me having to create any sketches or anything like that. So even though we chained up and down in Z, it still flattens it out to the lowest point and creates the loop of geometry that we want to have. So now I could go through and make my settings. I don't really need to in this case. And go ahead and hit OK. And you see that I get a 2D contour that goes around that, that loop right there without me having to create any sketch geometry. OK, let's look at another example of what we can do here. I'm going to do another 2D contour. And now what I want to do is let's pretend we did the rest of the fingers. And I want to do a finishing pass around the bottom half of this part. So for this, I'm just going to go grab this edge. I'm going to click on that once. And Fusion gives me that chain all the way around, which isn't the right chain. So I'm just going to go hover my mouse on the top of it again and click it a second time. And this time, I do want to be closed contour. And now I just want to go and select where I want that uh, geometry to kind of chain around to. So I'm going to grab the top of each one of these chamfers that go around the bottom ring of this part. And as I do, Fusion's figuring out, we'll take a look, a better look here in a second. Fusion's figuring out how to chain around there to get that. So you can see the black lines are, are going around where they were, but they're also chaining up and around and back down to where they started. Again, when we hit the green plus and look at that, and now if we look at it from the top, we get the exact contour that would allow us to do a contour around the inside of this part um, to machine the bottom half that we weren't able to do from the top side. So I'll just go ahead and hit OK, and we'll see that Fusion gives us a tool path that goes around there and, and cleans up those bottom faces. So that's pretty helpful there as well. Now the final example is this is a good example of a part where uh, I don't have a five axis machine, so to machine these faces right here, I'm going to have to use a ball mill to do that. So from the 3D menu, I'm going to select the scallop option, and I'm going to go grab a tool out of my library, and here there's a quarter inch ball that's listed in here. 
and I'm gonna go to my geometry tab. Now the key here is I wanna click on some kind of geometry that I want to exist as part of my selection when I'm done with my boundary. So I'm gonna to choose to click on right there once and Fusion flattens it down to the lowest point. Don't worry about that. Come back and click on it a second time. And now we're gonna, again, use our mouse to do a close contour to kind of chain around where we want Fusion to go to. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab those edges like that. So there's my boundary that I want and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the green plus to lock that in. And you'll notice that Fusion, again, flattens it down to the lowest portion of the geometry they selected. Don't worry about that. If we look at this from the top, you'll see that that boundary defines uh, the edge of all the features that we want to do. So don't worry about where it lives in Z. Just make sure it's around all the geometry that we want to machine. I'm going to go to my additional offsets and type in negative tolerance. If you've never seen that video, I recommend you watch that one to understand what I'm doing here. And I'm going to turn on contact point and boundary. Um, over on my passes tab, I'm going to set a step over of something like 10 thousandths of an inch just to machine this. And then maybe on the linking tab, we'll do a minimum retraction just so we don't see so many Z up and down moves. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now what we'll see is Fusion uh, machines that feature right there, keeping the tool defined inside of that boundary. So there are a couple different ways you can use the uh, chaining options inside of Fusion. To select the boundary, the geometry that you want. And remember, to activate it, what you have to do is click on the piece of geometry once, click on it a second time, and then choose open uh, contour or close contour, depending on what you're trying to do. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching the video.